Welcome to the video and today we are going to be talking about this Sigma 70-200 f2.8 zoom lens. So let's get into it. First off, this lens, it came with this nice travel case here. So you can pop the hood off and put it inside. And I didn't know this, the little strap can actually get longer. So like you can have it nice and long to go over your shoulder or smaller to just hold it. And these little things can come off. So that's super nice. There's good good padding, nice case. Enough about that. So the lens itself, you can take off the lens hood real quick, little button. And here it is. Now, something to note, this lens is giant. It weighs a lot. I'll put the weight right there. It's big. It on the end of the camera, like if you, you don't want to be holding it for a serious amount of time. But other than that, it's a great lens. Um, the image quality is amazing. The stabilization is amazing and has some cool features. First of all, it's weather sealed. That's that's one of the reasons I bought this lens. It's a weather sealed lens. So you see there's some rubber around it and that's super nice to have. And like the, the downside is there's a little bit harder to turn, but you don't have to worry about the rain. So um, we've got two here. We got our focus mode so we can have autofocus here. M O, which I don't know what that means. Actually, I should probably figure that out. And then manual focus. And then our focus string range full to three meters to infinity. Image stabilization. So we have off mode one and mode two. Mode one is more stabilized, but it can tend to drift a little bit. Mode two is not, doesn't drift as much, but um, is still very stabilized. And then we have custom modes here. So we've off C1 and C2, and then to, you can program your own custom modes with the USB docking base. I do not have that, but that's what that is for. And then there are three, this, three action buttons here to control things on your camera. Now, my camera can't do that, my current camera. Um, I am usually shoot with the Blackmagic Pocket 6K or the Blackmagic Ursa Broadcast G2. Now, that doesn't support the buttons, but other cameras do. Um, I will be getting a Canon R7 soon, and I will test that out with the Canon adapter, the uh, EF to RF adapter. So, other than that, we have a rotating collar. It does not come off, but you can remove the foot of it. So, I wish it came off, it doesn't, but there you go. Um, this is an Arca Swiss mount right here. I, as you can see, there's another one on top of it. Um, the base plate that, that is mounted to the lens itself it does not fit the Peak Design travel tripod that I have. So I added that base plate to it itself. Um, it's just a little bit too long. I think you can remove the pegs of the tripod so it does fit, but for now I just have two plates basically. Um, the lens cap is kind of nice. You can squeeze it and pop it off. The diameter is huge like that. It does not have motorized zoom. I don't think any EF lenses have that. So if you want to have motorized zoom, like for a broadcast environment, because it's f2.8, um, this would be great for um, if you're live streaming in a big event or something like that. That's what I've used this before. For um, it's not if you're if you are live streaming, I would recommend like a Fujinon TV series lens or Canon, something like that. But this does work great if you're on a budget. As far as the pricing goes, it's fifteen hundred dollars, which. For the image quality and the sharpness and the features it has is really good. This is a, a cheaper lens with great features and great quality. You could get a Canon lens that's smaller, it's Canon 7200RF or EF, um, that's smaller, lighter, but is more expensive. So if you're on a budget, Sigma lenses are good. Bigger, cheaper. So I think everything else is as you would expect it for a lens. Um, you can, you know, put the hood on backwards to save in space. And what else is there? Uh, I believe there's 11 aperture blades, so it has nice rounded bokeh. And because it, it is an f2.8 lens, it allows in a lot of light. So if you're doing low light shooting or um, want a fast shutter speed for like wildlife photography, this is a great lens for that. If you're doing like birds and stuff like that, you might want to get the uh, Sigma 150 to 600 Swartz lens or contra con I think it's complementary lens. It's the other one is cheaper. That the the cheaper one's $800 and the more expensive one, the Swartz lens is 2000 for the 150 to 600. Um, this is the Sport lens. I don't know. I don't think they have a cheaper version of this one, but um, the, yeah, I like it. I like having it. Um, 
it's a great lens, very sharp. Um, there isn't much chromatic aberration as far as I can tell. And the bokeh is super nice. Also, I think the weight would be less of an issue if I wasn't shooting with the camera that I am. I have a Blackmagic Pocket 6K, which is recording me right now on the Sigma 18 to 35 art lens. But um, the reason that it's, I mean, it's a heavy lens. I think it's around four and a half pounds. Um, oh, the weight will be up there again. So, but my setup with the Black Magic, with a, I have the core battery underneath it, and this lens is very heavy. But if you were to put like, like a Canon R7 or R10 with this, um, that would be much lighter setup. I haven't tested the autofocus capabilities of this lens yet, but I will be doing that in a later video with the R7. Because the Black Magic really doesn't have autofocus, I haven't had a chance to use autofocus in any means. So. It is what it is for right now. I'll be getting that soon, so link for video will be up there once it comes out and in the description as well. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell to see when I upload my next video. And thank you for watching.